this is how one scandal ruined Italian football forever. A dark secret that eventually led to the relegation of Juventus and the lifetime ban of their president. A scandal so deep that even the prime minister had some implications in it. Allegations of cheating and match fixing which led to Italian football's reputation being destroyed. But what really happened? Who was really guilty and was it a fair case? If you ask anyone in Italy they will certainly defend their team. But today we will go over the biggest football scandal of all time, Calcio Poli. It's May 2006, Juventus have just won their fourth Serie A title over the last five years, cementing themselves as the best team in Italy dominating their rivals. Juventus were already the most successful team in Italian history, the most supported team in Italy and their reign over the country was only getting stronger. Just like any successful team, they were hated, but they were winners and that was thanks to the head of it all, general manager Luciano Moji. How? Moji was one of the most powerful men in Italian football. He came from nothing, he wasn't rich, wasn't a professional footballer, he only managed to get started in football as a youth scout in the 70s. He worked tirelessly to network with powerful people in high places and slowly worked his way up the ladder to a point of working at some of the biggest clubs in Italy before landing his big role of general manager at Juventus in 1994. By this time Moji knew everyone, he could make things happen at a snap of the fingers, he was that powerful. Thing is, people wanted to know how powerful, just how much control did Moji have. There were allegations that Juventus were doping in the late 90s and with Moji at the helm, an investigation started in 2004 into Juventus and Moji to see if there were any wrongdoings from them. This investigation was held secretly and involved listening in on private phone calls and what they ended up finding turned out to be the biggest scandal football has ever seen. In fact, the people leading this investigation uncovered so much dirt they couldn't take it to the Italian Football Federation because some of the members were involved in the scandals themselves. Even the Prime Minister of Italy at the time, Silvio Berlusconi, who was also the president and owner of AC Milan was implicated too. During these wiretaps, here's what they heard. Luciano Moji was in direct communication with referee designators of Serie A attempting to influence results by picking certain referees he considered more favourable to Juventus, Pierluigi Pareto being the main designator in contact. Essentially, Moji would tell Pareto which refs he wanted for each game based on how much they would favour Juventus. An example of this is when Juve drew a Champions League first leg to Duke Gardens 2-2 and McCauley had a goal disallowed for Juve which would have won them the game. Their conversation went something like this. Hello, Gigi, where are you? We left. Oh, what kind of f***ing referee did you send us? Oh, Mandel is one of the best. I know, but McCauley's goal was valid. No, it wasn't. It was valid. It was valid. No, it was right in front of the ref. What are you talking about? It wasn't in front. All throughout the match, he messed up things for us. But he's one of the top. He can go f*** himself. And for Stockholm, I'm counting on you. For f***ing sake, mamma mia, this surely has to be a proper match. No. To win, you know. It was alleged Moji had a system to decide what ref was chosen for each game, but it wasn't just him deciding what ref he wanted, he also sent out strong messages to referees who didn't follow along, like their 2-1 loss to Regina in November 2004. Juve had two goals disallowed and Moji was furious. After the game, he confronted the ref for the game Paparesta along with his two assistants, but he didn't stop there. He used his many connections to call and tell big talk show hosts to slander Paparesta's name, controlling the media narrative of the ref. Everyone turned on him and ended up being suspended mostly because of the control that Moji had to do so. Despite all of this, there was not one piece of evidence of bribery or paying off refs. Not a single cent changed hands during this time, but prosecutors argued that Moji didn't need to. They saw what happened to Paparesta, how not playing along works. Refs were scared, feared losing their jobs or worse, so why would he even need to pay them? But those examples highlighted the two things Moji was in trouble for, controlling the media and selecting refs. Him and Fabio Boldas, who was the most popular Italian commentator, were close and Moji would tell Boldas to make certain referees look bad during games because he knew the best way to conceal any bias against him. But this isn't really evidence of match fixing, just evidence that the guy has too much power in football. It was the conversations with Pareto that was the smoking gun. On the 23rd of August 2004, Pareto assured Moji the second leg of the game against Jared Gardens was going to be 4-1 to Juventus. They went on to win the game for one. The next conversation they had was in relation to their upcoming match against fierce rivals AC Milan. Moji was heard in these conversations handpicking referees for each game he wanted. Then he went on to tell Pareto against Milan it has to be Tiziano Pieri. The ref for that game 
was indeed Pieri and Juventus went on to win the game 1-0. Pieretto then called Moji again just a week later to inform Moji that for their upcoming match against Ajax, Urs Meyer would be refereeing the match, much to Moji's jubilation. That was indeed the case and Juventus went on to win the game 1-0. These conversations happened all throughout the year and it was clear to see why this looked so bad against Moji. It showed clear bias towards Juventus and implicated that Moji could simply just pick whoever he wanted to officiate UV games. It's not bribery because he didn't pay anyone but it's certainly an abuse of power. Once this information was released, it was Armageddon. The Gazeta dello Sport posted these wiretap conversations in May 2006 on their newspaper thanks to a leak and despite the investigation not even being finished, the whole world knew what Moji and Cole were up to. But this scandal is about to get a whole lot worse. Because it turns out it wasn't just Juventus that were doing this. The leaks uncovered that Milan, Lazio, Fiorentina and potentially others were doing the same thing as well. It went from the Juve problem to Italian football's dark secret. The backlash was swift and brutal. Many referees resigned immediately. Pareto himself resigned and Franco Carraro resigned as president of the Italian Football Federation as he was involved too. Moji after all of this resigned as well, saying they killed my soul. Juventus' shares lost half their value just 10 days after the news broke and now it was time to start handing out punishments. After many appeals, the official punishments were Regina were fined 100,000 euros and deducted 11 points for the upcoming season. Lazio had 3 points deducted from the upcoming season, were kicked out of the 0607 UEFA Cup and had to play 2 home games behind doors. Fiorentina were docked 15 points, were kicked out of the Champions League as well as two home games behind closed doors. AC Milan were deducted 8 points for the upcoming season, were docked 30 points for the 0506 season as well as a game behind closed doors. But they got to play in the 0607 Champions League season for some reason and crazily enough, Milan went on to win the whole competition which must have felt pretty tough to watch for Juventus who were dealt the biggest punishment of them all. They were relegated to Serie B and started with a 9 point deduction. Plus, they had 2 titles stripped from them. The 0405 title which still remains unassigned and the 0506 title which was given to Inter Milan. This was a massively controversial move. Rather than leaving it unassigned, Inter Milan benefited. But before we even get into Inter Milan, the question remains why were Juventus relegated and so harshly punished while other teams weren't? There was no evidence of match fixing or bribery according to the Italian Football Federation but they stated that because Moji had the ability to, even though he didn't, that that was enough to convict them more harshly than the other clubs. There were however no demands for favours, no conversation between Juventus directors and referee themselves. In fact, Moji claimed he was the victim in this situation that every other team in Italy did exactly what he did, yet he was the only one punished so severely for it. That he was the scapegoat to rid Italian football of corruption, but getting rid of Moji was never going to get rid of corruption. Because even the outcome of this case is riddled in corruption. The amount of conflicts of interest that was in this case were very high. Guido Rossi took over as president of the Italian Football Federation. Rossi is a former Inter Milan board member and minority shareholder. That's right, the guy who signed off on Juventus' relegation and who gave Inter Milan the 0506 Scudetto was directly linked with Inter Milan which of course was met with a lot of backlash. And the title wasn't the only thing they benefited from. With the direct rival getting relegated, it meant Inter were able to snatch up Juventus' players for pennies on the dollar. They ended up buying Patrick Vieira and Zlatan Ibrahimovic who went on to be a world class signing for them. Not only that, Inter went on to win 4 more Serie A titles in a row. In 2011, there was another trial for Calciopoli, during which Moji's legal team released wiretaps showing that Inter Milan and Livorno were both in violation of match fixing rules and that 9 other teams were in violation of the same thing Juventus were, unfair conduct. From Cagliari to Udinese. So when Moji said every other team were doing what he was doing, he was not lying. The only problem was, Inter Milan and all the other teams that violated those rules could not have been convicted because the statute of limitations had kicked in, meaning it had simply been too much time since their crime was committed to do anything about it. Which once again brings up the point of why Inter Milan were the ones who were awarded the 0506 Scudetto. Where it gets tricky is the fact that the original prosecutors for the initial Calciopoli scandal were going to investigate Inter Milan too and it would have been a certainty that Inter Milan would have suffered the same fate as Milan and 
and Juventus, and they too would have been found guilty of the same thing. In fact, the only reason those prosecutors didn't find any dirt on literally every club in Syria was because of the fact that they were media leaks. Leaks obtained and released by Inter Milan-owned newspaper Gazzetto dello Sport. I'm not saying they did anything, but it's certainly fishy. The leaks only implicated the Juventus and Ace Milan, with Juve getting the harshest punishment, but had this investigation continued, then every club in Syria could have been in serious trouble, Inter Milan included. This scandal left an extremely dark period for Italian football. The league and Italy as a whole saw their reputation take a massive nosedive as 30 Serie A players who played in the 2006 World Cup left to join other European leagues in wake of the scandal. Once regarded as the best league in football, they were now slowly falling away. Spanish and English football ended up overtaking them, and Italian football still hasn't healed from it. To this day, people are still trying to prove their innocence. In 2023, Moji decided to go on TV and make a report trying to bring down other teams involved and clear his name using a USB containing 170,000 phone calls on it. As for where those teams are now, well, Juventus ended up recovering from the scandal. They were promoted one year after relegation and eventually found their feet in Serie A and won nine league titles in a row from 2012 onwards, dominating in Italy once more. But the fans of Italian football lost trust in the sport. Fans became more divided than ever. Just speaking about this scandal can trigger so many Italian football fans into rage because everyone wants to defend their team from any wrongdoing when the truth is everyone is guilty. Everyone has some implication of unfair conduct. It's just that Juventus were the ones who got caught and bared the harshest punishment for it. Many individuals involved in this case were eventually acquitted. Not because they were innocent, but because so much time had passed during these investigations that the statute of limitation kicked in. But one man was still punished. Luciano Moji was banned from any football activity for life. It's a scandal that I don't think anyone truly knows the truth about. There's so many things that could have been added to this video, but 99% of the information out there is pure speculation or blatant pointing the fingers at someone else. When it comes to hard evidence, there's just so little of it. This scandal goes so deep that we probably only know about 10% of what actually happened. But there's no doubt that this is easily the biggest match fixing scandal of all time. So let me know, do you think Juventus should have been punished so harshly?